Hello, my dear human friends. Scott St. Marie here. Welcome to the Depression to Expression podcast. Now, are you listening to my voice right now or are you thinking about the future? I caught you. I caught you. You were. You were thinking about something else. Even though you just pressed play, you're like, I'm going to sit down. I'm going to have a nice tea. I'm going to listen to Scott spew some stuff out of his mouth. But you're already thinking about the future. And a lot of us do. I do too. This is something I'm working on all the time. Where even if you're in a state of optimism, my friend, you're thinking about the future. It's like, oh, I can't wait till I get there. I can't wait for the thing thing. So you're thinking about the future. But then in difficult times, when we're worried and overwhelmed by that thought of the future, we're we're in that future moment. We're like, what if that happens? What if life plays out that way? What if I end up doing this? What if I end up doing that? And of course, our mind plays games and we do this with the past. I should have. I could have. Why didn't I? You idiot. You stupid idiot. Why didn't you do that? You could have done that, but you didn't. You suck. And oh, if you get there, you're going to be a failure. So help me God, Scott, if you end up doing that, you better not do that with your future. You better not. These, our mind just plays beautiful games, doesn't it? It's about time we we get our minds on our sides, at least to the best of our ability. I want to talk to you about, you know, how we always overthink our lives. And this topic comes up all the time with people I speak to because you, my friend listening, if you're human, you have high expectations of yourself, don't you? Me too. Like high expectations because we love to compare with other people, scrolling through Instagram, seeing all the stories of people living their best lives, watching Hollywood movies and wanting that fantasy life, that perfect life that where everything just ends up being all right. We want that. We thrive on that. We want to be our best selves and have the best life possible. This is what hustle culture is telling us, that the more you work, just work hard, keep at it, keep grinding. You're going to get that car. You're going to get that house. Then you're going to be happy. Self-help shares this this idea that we are lacking something in our lives. And the self-help, you buy the book, you're going to read, you're going to learn more about yourself, and you're going to be happier. I've read all the books 10 Steps to Happiness, 10 Minutes to Happiness, the Buddhist approach, the Christian approach, the Joel Olstein approach, the Dalai Lama approach, the Eckhart Tolle approach. (laughs) It's relatively all the same the more books you read, but we overcomplicate and overthink this whole life thing. And I just want to make it real simple for everyone listening. Real simple. And, you know, I had to really face a few massive challenges, especially recently, to be forced to think of life this way. Yeah, you, you kind of have to have no other option. So life is just this. That's all it is. That's all it ever will be. I know it's cringy. I know you're probably pissed at that message maybe because it's so obvious. But is it really obvious? If it was so obvious, wouldn't we just recognize that reality more? That this is all life is. And we keep running away from the present moment. We keep running away from these mundane and tedious tasks throughout the day in our routine so we can finally get that thing in the future. Be a better person. Have that that car. Have that house. Have that promotion. Be somewhere else in life. Looking forward to the vacation and the traveling. But here, in the moment, oh, this isn't life. There's no eventful thing that even requires me to pay attention. The things we do most days aren't worthy of our attention and admiration and praise. It's just making breakfast. I'm just commuting to work. I'm just watching TV. I'm just looking after the kids. I'm just having the same old conversations with my wife or husband. Well... That's my message to you today, my friend, and a message to myself today, actually, as I woke up just consumed with this idea and thought and need of productivity and getting a podcast out and responding to all the emails and having the coaching calls and then upgrading the course and reaching out to people in the course and making sure everyone's okay and then getting a little dose of the news and then, of course, I got to go for the jog and I got to work out and then I, oh my goodness. I already woke up and planned my whole damn day in my head. 
So my message to myself and the message to you is that this is life. Life is you waking up and making breakfast. Life is you going for a walk with the dog and picking up shit. Life is you getting dressed, doing the dishes, mopping the floor, cutting the grass, small talk with neighbors, small talk with strangers, chasing pleasure and avoiding danger. I love just putting rhymes in there. You know, we push all that away though. But that's 99% of life. I don't care who you idolize, maybe in the public eye, maybe a celebrity, maybe someone that you that you recognize on TV, movies. It doesn't matter how rich, how famous, how well-known someone is. Their life is relatively the same in that regard, that they still got to eat breakfast. You still got to put on a pant leg one leg at a time. But we have these thoughts and we admire the future so much and we want to get out of the present moment as much as possible. But we need to realize that you don't have to have these massively high expectations of yourself. Like, enjoy a little bit. I was addicted to the self-improvement and all of that. And let me just be clear here. Like, setting goals, wanting to get to a better place. If you're not in a great place right now, that's really important. That's really, really important and really good. You're not in a great place now. Where do I want to go? What do I need to do to get there? And let's start chipping away. Goal by goal, day by day, moment by moment. Develop a solid routine and work on your physical shape and build some mental muscle. That's awesome. But it can't consume us to the point where we only want that and we forget what life truly is. And that's all life is. It's the small things in, 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 in the day. That's all it is. The eventful, the massive things in life don't happen every day. Sometimes they don't happen every year. It's up to you to create the small wins and live in awe at just the small things. That's what I've had to do. Especially with food. I would just rush every meal because I'd be pissed because I'd be like, I spent all this time I'm eating. Now I just got to eat again in like eight hours. What a waste of time. I'd literally ask Kyle, my buddy at university, I'd be eating. I'd be like, he's like, what's wrong? I'm like, I'm pissed because then I got to make a sandwich again in like four hours. Stupid body, inefficient with food. Then I discovered like how little your body really needs as far as food to be super healthy. Like what's with this three meals a day stuff? Like, oh my God, it's so weird. But anyway, whoa, 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 that's way off topic. Anyways, that's a new podcast. But do you know what I'm saying? Like we always chase these things and we forget just like the simple stuff that makes up 99% of your life. Why would you rush through that? Why would you throw that away when that's literally life and you don't absorb that? You're not aware of that. Then you're throwing away what life is offering you. You're throwing away the majority of it. But no, we got to rush. We got to rush through life. We got to buy more things. We got to save up money to get that house. And when we get the ho- once we get the house, we got to get married. These eventful things. And then we're just going to rush through until we have kids. Then we're going to rush through until retirement. Get that pension, baby. I already told you about a few people I met who just like rush through life just to get a pension. Man, it's crazy. But then 10 years down the road, five years, 20 years, you look back and you're like, well, this is what I wanted. I'm finally here. But God damn. I kind of regret not appreciating where I was at the time. Are you going to appreciate what you're doing right now, 10 years from now? If you look back, are you going to say, yeah, I really soaked in those moments. That's how you live with no regret. You soak in the small stuff while still setting goals, while still wanting to be a better you, learn more, have that curious mindset, explore, go on adventures. But you still got to make breakfast. Still got to make tea. Still got to wipe down the oven and the countertop. Still got to clean the fridge once in a while. Still have to babysit. Still have to take in the car for an oil change. Still have to wash the car. Still need to go for a walk. Watch the clouds go by. Sunrise, sunset. These chores, this work that we do that we think is just getting in the way of something. What do you think it's getting in the way of? Because I did the math for me. And I realize that I'm rushing through food. I'm rushing through meals. I'm getting up. I'm being so productive. I'm rushing through the shower. I'm getting changed. I'm getting on calls right away in the morning, trying to help the world with their mental health. 
Woo! Look at me. I'm rushing through. I'm rushing through. Getting through work. So productive. And I'm rushing to get to the point where I'm not working and I can finally sit on my ass and watch TV or play a video game. That's what I was pushing away the whole day, rushing through, getting so much done to get to that moment. Hmm. So do some math for yourself and really figure out, okay, why am I getting through 10 things today so fast? Why am I not really enjoying the moments here? What am I running towards? Am I running towards that end of the day feeling where I just sit on the couch and play Candy Crush? Am I sitting on the couch and finally playing my new PS5 and that's why I rush through the day? You rush through 12 hours of the day to have one hour of pleasure. What if we live in awe of the things that we do every day and really just do them simply, do them slowly, do them mindfully. That's what mindfulness is all about. It's not about being upset that you have a hundred dishes to wash. It's about the reality and knowing that you can only wash one dish at a time. So just keep washing one dish at a time. Keep putting one foot in front of the other. I've had to force myself to do that. And you have to realize when you have that future thought, whether it's optimistic or not, play in the future for a while, but then come on back to the present moment and put one foot in front of the other with everything you do. And you put the left foot forward and you see if the stone is wiggly or wobbly and it's good. Okay, you put your weight on that. And then you lift your right leg. Check the stone, check the branches. Are they safe to, to safe to step on? Okay, and we're going to put our weight there. And then that's all you do through the day. Because eventually when you get that fancy car, that new promotion, when you actually get to that end point that you've always desired, well, what are you going to do? You're still going to have to go from A to B again, step by step. It's the same thing. So you may as well be in the present moment while you're here because you're, you're going to get to that point anyways. That you don't have to overthink your life and you don't have to overthink every single thing that you do to make sure that you finally get to that end point. Don't forget about the present moment. And that's not to put pressure on you. That's not to, to make you feel guilty for thinking. Thinking is a beautiful thing, very powerful, especially when you're on your own side with it. But eventually, the more you think about the future, the more you ruminate about the past, you don't get anywhere closer to a solution. Maybe that's another tip in this podcast here. That's something I realized. The more you think about something, like eventually you're going to hit a point of diminishing returns where the more you think you're not getting any closer, nowhere near as close, you finally have to take action. And that's about chipping away at these goals that you want, but still absorbing that moment and realizing that all life is, all life is, is these daily things, these habits that you have every day. What do you do when you first wake up? What are you doing in the shower? What are you making for breakfast? How's the commute to work? You, you chatting and doing some small talk with coworkers, smiling at your neighbor, shelving the driveway? When you know that this is the majority of your life and you have the willingness and you can change that and set goals in the future, but in the moment, you may as well be in it. In these daily tasks, you may as well be in that moment. You don't need to compare with anyone else because they're doing the same stuff anyways. But we have such high expectations of what life should be. Like, where do we get these? I'm going to do another podcast on like the effect of Hollywood and just that whole industry on how we see life and the, how we're conditioned to constantly want more and think that the more stuff we have, status, fame, money, materials, we, we just think that'll make us happier. It's so wrong. It's so wrong. When is enough enough? Set goals, but don't forget how simple life can truly be, my friend. It can be really simple if you want it to be. Just put one foot in front of the other. Stay strong. Keep being you. Express yourself. And I appreciate you listening. All of you listening, I appreciate your ears. I really do. And I hope you maybe uh, didn't think about the future too much or past while you were listening to this. Because I know it's easy to. I know, man. It's so easy. Even when I'm speaking about these, like doing a podcast. Because I have a theme when I, when I re press record and then I just kind of go for it. And you can probably tell because sometimes it's all over the place. Sometimes the podcast episodes suck. Sometimes they're great. 
But uh, this is cool practice for me too, for public speaking, uh, because you don't have a script really, and you got to feel the audience and see what they're looking looking for, looking at, and, and are some kids dozing off when I'm doing presentations at schools or employees? What are they doing? Are their eyes rolling? What are they looking like? So you got to kind of go off the cuff a bit. This is cool practice. So thanks for letting me practice, Anya. And uh, seriously, you're all doing fantastic work. I don't know if anyone's told you that. But yeah, life is complicated. It's complex. We want so much out of it because we're here for such a finite time. I get it. But don't forget to enjoy what you do on a daily basis. And you're always chasing, but just be okay with where you're at right now. Like you're going to get to wherever you want to get if you put in the work. You are. But right now, the things, the inevitable things that you do every day, it's good enough. You're good enough. Keep up the great work.